Hi everyone, it's Jay Witty. Hope you all are having a great day. So here I am again experimenting with the Limino Myco Powdered Pigment. And I figured I'm going to do a Dutch pour. So that right there is my base coat. And that is the Artist Loft Soft Bodied White mixed with some Montmarty Burnt Umber. And that pigment there is the moss. That color is called moss. And the next color, I believe, is the tan. Looks more brown or coppery to me, but they call it tan. Um, this one is called coffee. And that's a really pretty color. And then the next one, I believe, is the, yep, the tangerine which is really pretty. It's not a really true orange, but it, it's pretty. And then for real pop, I decided to go with fuchsia. So those will be the colors of the pigments that I'm gonna blow out. Now my base coat, I um, the pouring medium I used was the American Floetrol and distilled water to thin that out very, very thin. And, um, the pouring medium that I used for my pigments, uh, I wet them down with uh, the Liquitex pouring medium gloss. And for fun, I decided to add some Australian Floetrol to that mixture. So I got some pretty fascinating things happen with this particular pour. It's not really a Dutch pour, it's more like a blowout. Uh, I think the difference between a blowout and a Dutch pour is basically with a Dutch pour, you kind of blow the base over the top of your colors after you've laid your colors down. And with a blowout, you lay your colors down and you just kind of blow them out. You don't put any more of the base coat around alongside them or blow over, if, if that's making sense to you all. So... But what I found experimenting with this technique <laughs> was um, interesting because the um, pigments just kind of sank into the base, and you're going to see that. I uh, probably should have sped this part of the, the video up a little bit because we've all seen this. Um, but uh, this is a good example, though. This, you know, you can tell that my um, base paint is really, 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 really thin. And if I blew too much off, then I was going to end up exposing, I think, um, more of the canvas. And little did I know at this point that these mica pigments were going to sink. Um, and I'm still learning. I'm thinking maybe I should have had some standard um, acrylic paints in there um, to help hold those pigments up some more. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I thought that the Liquitex pouring medium would work as somewhat of a binder. And I'm not saying that I lost all the color, but I'm saying a lot of the color sunk. And you're going to see that as this trans, you know, transpires. But I found it fascinating because as I was blowing it out, the reactions now, you know, between the pigments and the base coat, um, I'm wondering if the Australian Floetrol and the American Floetrol played a part in some of these reactions, the two different types of Floetrol on the one canvas. I also wondered too, now my Artist Loft soft bodied white that's in the base is was that newer formula where everybody was having some problems with my whites eating up all my paint. And so I think that played a lot as to why the base coat just kept taking over. Even if I, even mixing in some of the Montmartre burnt umber, um, because that's a highly pigmented, you know, paint. So I kind of figured that that was going to counterbalance that, you know, white eating everything up. But I'm learning as I go along with this process, and I, I it, like we all do, we all learn. And I found it really fascinating how this evolved, how no matter how many times I layered those colors on top of this base coat and blew them out, they were still going to continue to sink. And what really fascinated me was the fact that it was almost like 
I felt like I'm, I was doing an open cup pour <laughs> without the open cup. And you'll see what I mean right here. Check this out. Pour that down and look how it kind of like sinks, but it spreads underneath. And I was like, wow, this is really fascinating to me. So at first, the first initial moment, I thought, oh, this is going to be a fail. And then I thought, no, this is experimental. This is going to be a really cool journey to go on <laughs> to see what these things are going to do. And so I continued to layer. But look at that. I mean, that in itself looks really cool to me. And I thought, okay, well, you know, what, what do we got going on here? So um, I'm layering, you know, I continue to put the colors down. And again, it just kind of sinks in. And I, but the whole pattern around it is now growing. It's like, you know, they're sinking in and expanding out underneath the base. And I thought, wow, this is just really cool. But, you know, I, th I thought this color combination would be interesting between the neutrals and then the pops of the tangerine and that fuchsia. I thought it would have, um, add a little bit of vibrancy. And that right there, look at that. Doesn't that not look cool? I mean, that looks really cool to me. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's on fire underneath there. Look at that glow. So I proceed to take my dryer and I begin to blow out and I'm loving what I see. Absolutely loving what I see. Look at, it just kind of like blows up. Look, oh, if only it would have stayed like that, but it doesn't, okay? Everything slowly starts to sink again and you see those cells developing almost, um, almost like a ghostly image. It's just so bizarre. I just wish you guys could have been standing right next to me during um, this whole process to watch how this evolved. And even when I stopped recording, this painting continued to evolve. It continued to change. And I did tweak it and play around with it a little bit more. My husband came into the studio and um, he said, well, try this, you know, add a little bit here. So we played together with it. We tweaked it a little bit together with, you know, his, his, his suggestions and whatnot. Um, so... I do take you in, you know, at the end for the wet and then the dried results. And it's just fascinating, like I said, how this evolved, how this kept changing. And even when I layered those micas, um, those pigments, you know, over and over and over again, they continued to still sink deeper and deeper and deeper, you know, underneath that base coat. And then, you know, why didn't I pick it up and tilt it? You know, I, I even thought about that to myself. Maybe I should have picked it up and tilted it to see what happens. But, you know, I wanted to stick to the initial game plan. I really was loving what what transpired here. I don't call this a total failure, even with the end result. Um, this is one of those pieces where it looks kind of eh from a distance, but when you get on top of it, the detail is truly amazing. Uh, the textures, and there's texture in this again. And again, it didn't craze. It didn't crack because these paints were way, too, you know, the paint uh, base color was way too thin and the micas were way too thin. But there's still creases in it. And I, again, is that the chemical difference between the Australian Floetrol and the American Floetrol used on the same canvas? What caused those creases? And these are all just questions, you know, that came to my mind. Um, I'll probably mix up because I used everything that I made as far as the pigments go. Go. I used it all up. There, are, Every ounce of what I made is on that canvas. So I'll probably go back in mix up some more of those colors and maybe use a brush and hand paint, you know, once now that it's dried uh, to bring in a little bit more pop here and there and, and play with it that way. I don't know. I might just leave it the way it is. Um, so we'll see. But, you know, I just kept messing with it. Look at that. You know, it's like, wow, look at that explosion of color. And then it just kind of starts to sync up. But then look at those amazing pearls that are developing. And I didn't even use a pearl cellular recipe. <laughs> I 
obviously didn't. I think it's that artist loft soft bodied white that's doing it. Um, even through, you know, mixing it with some of, of that burnt umber, it's still a very powerful. Um, look, and I'm using my straw there to blow out the center to see what happens. And it appears and then it disappears. And the color appears and then it disappears. So I was really having fun playing with this. Um, but the end result, I'm, I'm kind of happy with. I, I'm not saying that it's an ultimate fail. Uh, it was truly interesting. Uh, to see and to watch as it look at that those are my wet results and as I began look at that isn't that gorgeous oh my god look at look at that gorgeous 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 oh my god look 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 at that corner <gasps> but it continued to change on me even when it was sitting there it just continued to change on me and so I played with it some more and then I allowed for it to dry, and it changed even more. And it just wouldn't hold those shapes as well as I had wanted them to, okay? Because that base coat just kept kind of eating it up slowly. <laughs> but I did have a lot of fun with this. So I'll probably tweak my um, recipes a little bit as far as what I did. Maybe add some standard acrylic paint to it to help hold those uh, micas uh, up more. There it is, dried. Um, but look at that. You can still see the detail as soon as I focus in. Um, I just found it to be really amazing, really amazing. And like I said, maybe I'll, I'll mix some more mica up, you know, more of those pigments up and just kind of highlight some of the areas and pull in a little bit more color. I don't know. But look at, I just thought that that was so cool. So anyways, guys, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. I, you know, I respond to each and every one of you. And so check out the description box down below. Just tap on the title. It'll take you right there. It'll give you all the information that you need to know. And until next time, guys, please um, stay safe. Take care. Blessings to you all. And if you're new to my channel, I invite you to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.